Hi everyone and welcome back in this fourth video. In this video I'm gonna show you how to receive your data from Speckle to Power BI. How you can use the 3D viewer inside Power BI and how you can extract the parameters to create awesome dashboards. So let's get started, okay? So first of all, before we start receiving data, let's make sure that our Power BI connector is corrected installed. To do that, let's open the Speckle Manager. And here, under Install, you need to find the Power BI connector. If you don't see this here, please go lower and find the Power BI connector and click Install. Once you have installed the connector, you can go and open the file uh, explorer to go in your documents and here in your documents you need to see this folder power bi desktop inside the, this folder you need to see the custom connector folder and custom visual folder so go on and open the first one here you need to find this file and in the custom visual you need to find this 3D visual file. Once you make sure that you have these files, go back into Power BI and go to Files, Option Settings, Options, Security. So let's select here Not Recommended. And this will make sure that we don't have any blockers when we receive the data from a speckle. Okay, so let's close this. And now let's go and import the 3D viewer. So by clicking three dots and import visual from file, we go into documents, Power BI desktop, custom visuals, and we click this file. Once you have imported, you will see this blue cube here. Let's click on that. And here, this one is our placeholder for the 3D viewer. Next step is to receive the data. So let's go click get data, search for speckle here. And we're gonna use the second one here, get model by URL beta connect. If it's your first time, probably you will have to authenticate using your Speckle account. Otherwise, let's go to our model um, in the web app. Let's find the massing model that we created in the third video. So here, if I select one of the massings, uh, we see all the data on the side. So let's copy paste this link. And I'm gonna click transform data. Now I see this is my source data table. Um, the next step will be to actually rename this, let's rename it uh, base. I'm not gonna touch the data here, so I'm going to duplicate this and rename it to geometry data. And here on this table, I'm going to filter out all the necessary data that I don't need. So if I go to speckle type, I don't need, I only need to keep the B rep because my B rep holds all the information and all the parameters that I need. So let's go on, okay. And now each of these lines represents one of these massing boxes. So I have land use, floor name, floor height, etc. 
So let's go and extract now this information. For land use. And this is how you extract um, the parameters and you create new columns uh, with their values. So you need to make sure that you write the, um, the parameter name correctly as you see it here. It's saying case sensitive Power BI. So make sure that it's correct. Let's click OK. And now you can see I have all my values correctly here. Let's go and do the same things for all the values that I need, just quickly. Perfect, I extracted all the data that I need. The next step is to convert the text data to numbers, okay? Because when we extract the data from Speckle, all the data is like text. So I will need to go here and click this small icon and create you know, a whole number. Here is a decimal number. The same. Perfect. Now the numbers are numbers and text um, are text. And the last step before saving uh, this table and the data transformation that we just did is to um, round these long uh, numbers because when you have such so many decimal numbers and you start creating your charts and graphs, sometimes you might get um, the wrong uh, results, especially when two numbers are actually equal, but they change only in the last digit. Uh, this might cause some weird um, results to come out uh, when you build your graphs. So let's go and right click here, transform round, these into decimal numbers. Perfect. I'm going to do the same for the other three. Nice. Now I'm ready to go and save and apply all these changes. So now I see that I have two tables, I have my base and the geometry data. But before start start populating the dashboard, I will need to create a relationship between the base and the geometry data table. And this I'm doing this because I will use the base table to visualize my 3D uh, model. I'm doing that because the geometry data, if you remember, holds only the geometry information for the B rep it doesn't have anything else. It has only that information. And the base model here has also the lines and the mesh and any other information that we're having is here intact. Okay. So I'm going to use this one as the main source to visualize my 3D model. And then I'm going to link the geometry data table to that source. So let's go to uh, model view. Here I can see the two tables. And I'm going to link the by object ID. With object ID. And I create many to many relationships in both directions. Okay. Like this, when I manipulate something on the 3D model, I'm going to get uh, results in my geometry data. And then the same when I click something on the geometry data, um, let, 
my charts, I'm gonna um, see that reflected on my 3D viewer, okay? So let's go back. Let's expand this here. And populate the fields. Perfect. Now I can see my 3D mess. And the next step is to add a slicer here. And for the slicer, I'm going to use the geometry data. I'm going to add the land use. I'm going to change the view of this to tile. Perfect. So if I click education, now I can see my education building. And this happens because now, uh, you know, the geometry data is linked with the base uh, data. If I deselect this, I can filter by commercial. So I can see now this is my commercial object. Office is my office. And the residential. Okay. Let's go add now a few charts. Um, let's start with the bar chart. Here I want to add on the x axis the land use and then y and the sorry in the y axis I need to, I want to add the land use and the x axis I want to use land use area and then of course I'm gonna use the land use again as a legend to um, have it a bit more colorful. The next step I will do, I'm gonna add area chart here. I will use again, um, let's use again the land use as a legend. And then I will add by floor name. and the land use area on the y-axis. Perfect. Now I can see this one. The next one will be, let's add a donut. I will add here the building data. So let's go and add a building name. Maybe, oh yeah, the building name as a value, as a legend maybe. Um, and then the values can be um, some of the land use area again. Nice. And then the last one will be to let's add the ribbon chart and see if there are any relationship between the buildings. So I'm gonna uh, see here on the x-axis, I'm going to add again the building name. The, I'm going to add the summary level floor area here. And then as a legend, I'm going to add the land use. Nice. So now I can see that building two zero and one, they have some relationship, but because they are not correctly um, you know, sorted, the columns, I can go here and sort by building name. After doing that, I would like to actually change the colors and the visuals to match my 3D messing, okay? So the 3D messing needs to match uh, these colors and visuals. And to do that, I'll just go here in the view and select the theme that I like. I like these colors. 
And now by selecting the 3D visual, I can go here, object display, conditional formatting, and I can now start adding some rules. So the main rule that I want to apply is when you know the land use the land use is uh, office you make it green when it's like education is black and so on so let's go at the rules land use I'm gonna add five rules when it's office we make it green Perfect. So if I click OK now, I see that you know the results, um, uh, the color of the buildings, of the mass, uh, of the messing, changed. Um, so if I now check my education, for example, I see that it's here. If I check my commercial, I can see that it's here. It's office, residential, service. Everything is here, perfect, and it works properly. So if I go and select this donut, now I can also see the slicing, uh, how it works here. Same goes for um, this building here. Now you can see like how everything uh, interacts. And if I select uh, also here, you see that uh, right now I cannot select anything. To fix that, I will need to um, go back here and add the two tip data. Okay, so the two tip data will be the object ID that links back to this um, to the geometry data table. So if I click now something, you see that I get uh, the result. So I click the first, the first uh, object here, and you see it's like 50% of the residential. I think now everything should be working fine and correctly. Um, it seems like everything is okay. Feel free to explore and. Um, you know, experiment with the data, uh, experiment with the charts. Uh, you can uh, customize them, you can refine the numbers, you can create like calculations, you can do many things with Power BI. So feel free to explore. And if you have any questions or any like uh, thoughts that you want to share with us or any feedback that's really important to us, please. I strongly recommend go to the community forum, uh, the Speckle community forum. We have a link here on the um, on the YouTube uh, under the YouTube video. So find the link, go to the community forum, and post your questions there or any feedback that you have. Okay. And thank you so much for following uh, the these videos. I hope that this was helpful, and you know uh, you got inspired to create more and build more. Um, and I hope to see you in the next uh, video tutorial, okay? So, see you.